He got more courage than I got, because I ain't going to get up here and sing. He got I me, mean, shoot. I'm, boy, everybody going to run out the door. So, but I do remember when I was little. Praise God, huh? When I was little, though, my mamma did have me sing at a church, and uh, I won a baseball clock. was pretty neat. I can't sing. I think it was more because they felt sorry for me. So, but uh, it's one of my fonder memories. So praise the Lord. Before I begin, I just wanted to share something this morning. Um, my brother was asking this morning about some healings, uh, and he asked God to show him it. And since then, uh, as people came in, uh, he's been hearing testimonies. Amen. But, uh, you know, over the week, somebody had uh, reached out to me and said, hey, we go pray for my sister. Can you pray for my cousin? It was a cousin. And she said, she's not doing too good. I said, yeah. So I hung the phone up with her, and I messaged her back. I said, I prayed for her. And then it kind of was on my heart. I called her back. I said, hey, call me. I said, can I go pray for this person? And she's like, well, yeah, let me call. She called back. She says, yeah, you can go pray for her. And I didn't know what I was getting into. To be honest, I didn't. I said, I, I just feel led to go pray for her, so I'm going to go. And uh, so I decided to call back again, and I said, hey, what's going on with this lady? And she says, well, they took her leg off, and she's in bad shape. She's got clots everywhere and massive bone infections. I said, well, okay. I said, who broke her heart? Because the Bible tells us a broken heart dries the bones, but a merry heart does good like medicine. So if there's a broken heart, and uh, I, I, I do got a sermon, I promise you, but if there's a broken heart and the bones become dry, it affects the marrow, and the marrow is what the blood feeds on. So when this is, you have a broken heart or childhood trauma or soul wounds or bitterness that you've been holding on to for a long time, it dries the bones. It affects the blood, and it affects your immune system. She says, well, I don't know. I said, okay, well, I'll go see her. So I went to go see her, and I remember pulling up in the parking lot, and I said, Lord, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't even know what I'm walking into. I said, I'm here because I felt led to come here, and I said, I'm just asking for a miracle. That's it. That's all I asked for. And I remember I went in there, and when I went into a room, I went into the room number, and I had to go through all these checkpoints to get back there. And I'm like, man, this, this, this doesn't look like a good floor at a hospital. And uh, when I walked in the room, I took one look, and I, I walked out. Because I said, man, this, this can't be the right. This can't be right. This can't. It, there's no way. This lady's going to die. So, and the guy looked at me and he says, oh, you must be clergy. I, don't, I later found out what clergy was, but I said, yeah, sure, that's me. I got the Bible in my hand, so I walked back in there. And uh, she wakes up somehow, and she's got all this breathing stuff on her. She can't talk. So we set this uh, communication up where she would blink her eyes or kind of nod her head. And... Uh, I said, hey, have you accepted Jesus? I went through that little spew with her, and I said, if anybody broke your heart? And she shook her head, and I said, well, if, if you'll forgive that person right now, Jesus will heal you. Amen. I said, we'll give you a second chance on life. I said, but you can't squander this one away. And we talked for a minute, and I read some scripture to her that me and you was talking about this morning. His word don't return void. Healing is for today. Jesus is the same yesterday, today. And no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And as I was reading it to her, she started like, you could hear stuff coming out of her body. It, was, it, 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 it took me back. I stepped back. And I, I, I almost bolted for the door. I didn't know what was happening. I thought bells and alarms were going to go off. I'm being serious. And uh, so I said, I bind that spirit of fear in Jesus' name is trying to attack me. And then I started praying with her. I said, let's pray. And we prayed. And it took, whole thing maybe took five minutes. And I walked out and I told the nurse, hey, um, when are you taking her blood work again? We're getting ready to do it. I said, yeah, there's no need. Her blood's going to come back perfect. You got, she's going to be home. She's going home. Yeah. And uh, they looked at me like I was nuts. And here she is. This lady's on every machine in the world. No leg. Can't talk. Breathing tubes. And, uh, and I hear you, confidence. I don't even know if it was confidence. It was like it wasn't me that was saying it. I said, you think I'm nuts, don't you? 
And she just kind of looked at me. I said, it's all right. I said, Yo, Jesus is faithful. And I walked out. Within 23 hours, they took her off that floor and put her in a recovery hospital. And uh, the girl put a little testimony up on the page. But my point is, is I, I didn't, I had fear. I didn't know what I was getting into. And I'm just being honest. And any time we encounter a stronger trial or tribulation in our life, God will reveal things that are within us. But this scripture was very fitting today. It says, Psalms 57, 7, My heart is fixed, O God. My heart is fixed. I was singing and give praise. I didn't, I didn't know what I was getting into. I was probably better that I didn't. But I stepped out in faith. And I was faithful because God had, I had felt led to go there. And because of that, it was nothing that I did, but this lady had an opportunity to hear some truth. And she heard the reality, hey, if I don't forgive, and I shared with her that scripture and the, the truth of the word of God that, hey, I'm, I'm going to die. Unforgiveness and bitterness will kill you. I promise you. A lot of the times people in our childhood, we have unforgiveness towards our parents. Deep-seated hurts and soul wounds. I'm not talking about today. I've forgiven them. I've moved on. That's fine, but the damage has been done. You got to get their demons out. You got to repent. How does this fit in the message? Well, it's the song, 616. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in who? Jesus. The anointed one from God who was sent to save his people from their sins. That's what the name Jesus means. The anointed one of God, the one that had the Holy Spirit, God in the flesh, poured out upon him. And he was sent for one purpose, to save his people, to redeem, to buy back, to purchase, to rescue his people. From their sins. And what's amazing is that despite of all of our failures and Adam being the biggest mass murderer in human history, we were still called God's people. He loved us. We were still called his people. Now, I don't know about you, but when someone stabbed me in my back growing up, they weren't my people no more. They weren't my people. Hey, I ain't got nothing to do with that dude. That dude ain't my friend. I don't even know him. If I see him, I wouldn't give him a, 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 a cup of urine if he was on fire. I remember being that angry at people. I'm just being serious. But God, despite all of our shortcomings and failures, he says, hey, that's still my people. I love you. I want to heal you. If my people would just repent, humble themselves, and turn from the wicked ways, I will hear their cry from heaven. And I will heal their land. We talked about this. What is our land? It is our body. It is our temple. Jesus loves us. But we have to have our heart fixed on God and his word. Through it all, through it all, we have to learn to trust in God. Well, how do you learn to trust in somebody? You got to go through something. You got to go through something. When I was young, I was in and out of jail. And I knew no matter what, eventually my mother would come see me. She would be there. I could trust on her. I could trust in her. I knew my father loved me. I wasn't the best kid by any means. And I knew my mamma would always write me a letter or send me a Bible. Always. Always. So I had learned through my trials and tribulations that I could trust in them. In other words, we're going to go through some things in life. But if all we ever do is just be a weakened warrior for Christ, we're never going to really learn who God is. So then you have to really ask yourself, is your heart and mind really fixated on Christ? Amen. Is it? Right. I ask this every week. I pose questions. Are we serving Jesus of the world Jesus of, or Jesus of the Bible? Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in God. I've learned to depend on his what? Word. word. Who is his word? Well, the Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was made flesh and the word dwelt among us. There's confirmation. His word is what? Living and active. So when you're hiding his word within your heart, you're hiding Christ within your inner man. You're serving him with all your heart because you love him and you want the blessings. You want to inherit eternal life. That's it. We're not serving Jesus of the world. We're serving Jesus of the Bible. Well, that's hardcore, as he said this morning. Well, why? what do you say to people that just say, hey, man, that seems like there's a lot of stipulations to being a Christian. Hey, I didn't write the book. I didn't write it. There's a lot of stipulations to serve in the world. If you think about it, well, what do you mean? Well, if you want to burn, die and go to hell, you got to do everything the Bible tells you not to do. 
If you want to be saved and go to heaven, you got to do everything that the Bible tells you to do and not do the things that the world tells you to do. It's real simple. You're either going to serve one or you're going to serve the other. But to be fixed on something is to be secured, fastened, and tightly. So it's to be secured to something. It's to be fastened to. When you're fastened to something, you're, you're connected with it. Now, I don't know about you, but when I would do things in my past and I would secure to something to it, a picture on a wall, a, a, a car part, you don't want it to fall off, gosh forbid. But a lot of the times when trials and tribulations come our way, we kind of fall off. The first wind blows or our foundation crumbles. And then we're in church saying, why, God, why do you allow this to happen? Hey, listen, you didn't do what the Bible says. He says, my heart is fixed. The Greek word for heart is your inner man. I would sing praise and I would give him praise. We have to sing unto the Lord. The joy of the Lord has to be our strength. You want to see the miracle signs and wonders in God? We've got to start doing what the Bible says. I'm going to read this. Jeremiah 29, 13. I've got a few scriptures here. But the question we have to ask ourselves is, hey, is our heart really fixed on God? Is it fixed on yourself? Well, what do you mean? I'm, 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 I, are you a God of your own imagination? Are you serving yourself, your flesh? Or are you serving Jesus of the Bible? Because I promise you, you're going to come to a point in life to where you have to calculate the cost and forsake the things of the world. As James 4.4 4 tells us, that friendship with the world is hostility to God. Hey, I didn't write the book. It's not an easy thing. <laughs> Being a Christian is hardcore. Yes, it is. Yes, sir. Seeing that lady healed it was worth it. Amen. It was worth it. It didn't affect me. But it had changed my life. And then I started asking myself, hey, listen, up. do you really believe this for yourself? That's what, that's what the question well, I believe it for other people, but do you believe it for yourself? Now you've got to do a self-investigation. Jeremiah, let's go to Jeremiah. I, I got some scriptures. I'm going to read these. When your heart is fixed on the Lord, there's a couple things that's always going to happen. One, your mind will be stayed on perfect peace because it says, he whose mind is stayed on thee shall have perfect peace. I'll get to Jeremiah. I think it's Isaiah 26, 3 and 4 says, thou will keep him in perfect peace because his mind is stayed on thee. Because he what? Trusts in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever. Not just today, not just through your trials and tribulations, not just through your storms, but forever. So that means when things are going good, you can't let your guard down and step back out into the old nature because that's what the enemy will do. It's easy to get on your knees when you're going through a battle after you've done everything that you can do. But we gotta, we got to be on our knees. we got to trust in God every day, all day long. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understandings and all your ways acknowledge me and I will direct your path. I will direct your path. Who? Jesus will direct our path. How do we get their direction from Jesus? Through his word. We have to study to show ourselves approved. When we do this, we can understand that all things will work together for the good because we love God. And we know that we've been called according to His purpose. See, everybody will quote that scripture. Hey, it's all right, brother. It's going to work out for your good no matter what. God's behind the scenes pulling the strings. Hey, dude, you're serving Satan. I don't know what God you're serving, but if you continue to live in sin like that, I promise you it ain't going to be good. But they will convince themselves of a lie and live in delusion rather than to admit and believe that they've been lied to. Oh my gosh, what do you mean? I got to make some changes? I got to stop doing wrong and start doing right? Well, I'd rather just stay in my miserable existence of a life. I'd rather just be sick. Oh, it's my thorn in my side. Hey, look, dude, you ain't Paul. Paul was like the man. And I'm sorry, you ain't Paul. Jesus ain't going to give you a thorn in your side. Paul would walk in a room and people would just heal. Boom. He would say, that, boom, they're healed. But Paul went through many persecutions. Shipwrecked, many lashes, beaten, stoned. But what was neat is the very ones that he tried to kill were the ones that lowered him out through a roof in a basket. They saved their life. 
And see, the very one that you turned your back on most of your life is the very one that's trying to save your life. Paul had free will. He could have said, I'm not getting in that basket. I'm not going out that window. And he probably would have, maybe would have died. In other words, he had a choice. You have a choice. Yes, sir. Step out in faith, trust in the Lord, fix your heart on the things above and God and his word and inherit the blessings. But yes, the cost it will be great. You will go through some things. It's going to cost you something. Are you really ready to let it go? Well, everybody wants God to be an ATM. Well, I just want to be healed. I got a, I got a book right here from my brother. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm going to read this. Full of faith healings. Full of them. Full of them. The guy that wrote it, he said, received the healing himself. Why did he receive it? Well, this book wasn't written a thousand years ago. This, is a, this looks like a pretty recent book, probably with some recent stories. My point is, is, Jesus is the same Jesus today that died on the cross thousands of years ago and was resurrected. And it's the same Jesus that dwells within you and wants to give you life and give it to you eternally. He wants to give you a life that's filled with exceedingly riches and abundant joy. He wants to heal you. He wants to deliver you. He wants to set you free. From the bondages. But the question we have to ask ourselves, why do we live in delusion and want to hold on to the bondages? Why? They torment us. They're miserable. They take from us. They steal time from our family, our kids, but yet we still don't want to let them go. But then we find ourselves telling our children and our loved ones, but I love you. I love you. I love you. I, I'm here for you. I'll always protect you. You know I love you. But then you're cussing your wife out. You're chewing your kids out. You're going to the bar. You're doing drugs, whatever it is. You're being a slave to sin. And I'm not hypocritical. Hey, I was there. I promise you. I said it at the deliverance class. I did enough sinning to let for everybody in here. When I went to my deliverance, I'm telling you, I'll never forget it. The man said, hey, and I say this all the time. And we all know this. You guys remember the posters they hang up for circuses? They advertise. Hey, listen, the, the circus is coming in town. You would be at the grocery store and see the, the, the picture. And, oh, that looks the guy on the wheel of fire or something cool. Right? Well, he said, if I was advertising on how to collect demons and put up a poster, I'd put your face all over town. And you got, we can laugh about it, but, hey, I knew I was in big trouble. I, man, hey, listen, my life is jacked up. I need some help. What I thought was right isn't right. What do you mean I'm living wrong? And then here's where he hit me with the real whammy. He kind of leaned in, put his hand on his chest. He said, how long have you been saved? 2007, he said, and you know better than you're doing this? He said, you're in big trouble, dude. You're in big trouble. Big trouble. Because it's better for a man not to know the way and to go astray than to know the way. So now that we all know the truth, hey, you're held at a level of accountability. We have to fix our heart and mind on the things above. This world is going to perish. It's going to a hell in a handbag. I'm telling you, have you seen, has anybody seen the curriculum that they're putting in schools next year? Pornography. Sex books in the library for kids in elementary school teaching about anal sex. You think I'm kidding. This is a real thing. This is real. This is real. This is happening. This is happening in our schools. Hey, listen, I'm not, I'm not on politics or anything, but what I'm saying is, is you got to pick a side. You're either going to serve sin or you're going to serve Jesus. And it isn't going to be the Jesus of your own imaginations. You're going to have to let go of some things. It ain't even about you. It's about your children. Jesus died on the cross, not for himself, but for what? For God to love the world. His children. His children. We are his children. We were created in his image and likeness. Satan wants to destroy us. God wants to give us life and give it to us abundantly. Why do we continue to hold on to things? Some things we do to ourselves. Well, I'm not ready to let it go. Hey, listen, that's your choice, dude. When hell comes to breakfast, you'll, you'll, be, you'll be calling. If so be that you're that fortunate. 
It's only by the grace of God. His unconditional love and favor, his mercy. Yes, it is unending. Yes, it's new every day. I've said it before. Thank the Lord because I need it. But is your heart really fixed on the things above? Is it secured and fastened tightly? It's like, it's like the super awesome Gorilla Glue. Seriously, it's a bond. And that's what Jesus wants with you, a bond. He wants to be one with you. After all, he dwells within you. And you might say, well, this is pretty elementary. Well, that's cool. Sometimes it's good to go to the basics. We said it this morning, the Bible, the basic instructions before leaving earth. But, what? but then we ask ourselves, why is my life filled with misery? Why am I struggling with addictions? Why, why am I fighting with my parents? Why can't I keep a job? Yes, sir. Well, dude, you didn't read the instruction manual. Oh, yeah. Well, I heard my pastor. I watched Joe Olstein on TV. Hey, great, awesome, praise God, that's good. But did you read the instruction manual? Yeah. Yeah, did you read it? Don't take my word. Don't. Read it for yourself. After all, when you bought a new car, you open you. you, you you, 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 you know what I mean? You put some effort into that. You set up the dealer for eight to ten hours. What? To get that material blessing. I know. My daughter just got one. She sat there for ten hours. Ten hours. You know what it's like to get a Christian to sit in a teaching for an hour or two? Do you really know? Yeah. I, dude, I mean, seriously. Unless you got the big church with the smoke machine, the fog, and the... The music. I mean, seriously. Yeah, that's, that's what everybody's looking for. You're going in there like you're going to a nightclub. Hey, listen, they're dropping Easter eggs out of this or that. Hey, look, dude, you're an heir. I, look, I'm not, I'm not bashing anybody. I, don't, I like the fog machine. I think it's kind of cool, but I, I, don't, I don't need that. I just need the word. Why? Because the fog machine isn't going to help me. The loud music isn't going to help me. The feeling that Jesus is there isn't going to help me. Amen. Why? Because I don't need to feel that Jesus is within me because his word tells me that he dwells within all those who believe. Amen. That we are sealed with his spirit, sealed, fixed together until the day of redemption. And that the Holy Ghost is our comforter. He's our helper. He's our very present help in a time of trouble. Yes, sir. The fog machine isn't. Yes, sir. The loud music that makes me feel good. Oh, I feel Jesus here. Oh, hallelujah. I feel Jesus. And then as soon as you get in the car, you feel Jay-Z or beyond whatever, whoever it is. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, let's go to Frisch's, kids. You're bumping some rap out the thing, some hard rock, heavy metal. I mean, whatever. What happened to feeling Jesus? Because it wasn't Jesus you were feeling. It was the lust of your flesh, the sensations. Oh, hallelujah. I came down and I got saved. I felt Jesus. Yeah, you had a mental conversion. It didn't last. The enemy comes to steal the seed that's been sown. How do we know this? Because they lost the seed before they even hit the parking lot. They did. It's the truth. This is what's going on in society, man. We have to wake up. Many are called, few are chosen. You are here because why? You are chosen by God. You have to understand, my brother, my sister, my family, you can't carry nobody across the finish line. Only yourself. You ain't taking your wife with you to heaven. You ain't taking your husband and your kids with you. You ain't doing it. They're not standing up there next to you when you stand in front of the Lord and you have to answer for all your idle words. It ain't nobody but you. And if you don't make a decision and repent and turn from your wicked ways, you're going to be burning in hell. Not your family, but you're here. Why are you here? Because you love the Lord. You want some truth. There's something in your heart that's saying, hey, listen, something's got to change. If you don't believe me, look around. Where's everybody else at? Right. Let me put some smoke machines up here. I'll throw out some free Christian palm reading. You know what I'm saying? I'm serious. And they'll be lined up down the street, man. Hey, listen, with what judgment we shall judge, be judged. Listen, I'm not making a judgment on anybody, but what I'm saying is, hey, I've come to a conclusion. I've made, I've made my evaluation. I've come to my conclusion. My heart is fixed on the Word of God. And if you don't like it, I don't know what to tell you. 
but I can't help you across the finish line. Only you can help yourself. Jesus will lead you down the paths of righteousness, but you have to step out by faith. You got to do something. You got to do something. You got to repent. You got to forgive. Well, I've accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Praise God. Does somebody tell you you can't fornicate? Does somebody tell you that Jesus is your only hope? Well, that's why I got saved. Well, okay. Well, then it's time to make some changes. Jesus is your only hope. I promise you. I promise you. This man ain't, no, ain't my hope. We got to stop putting our hope and validations in men and women. Amen. Leaders, all this stuff. It ain't it. Jesus is your healer. Jesus is your deliverer. How do we get to Jesus? Through his word. It's real simple. How do we see the miracle signs and wonders come to pass? Well, we step out in faith. We understand that if God is for us, who can be against us? We know this when our heart is fixed on his word. Jeremiah 29, 11. I, I probably could quote this, but I'm going to read it because I, I tend to chop things up a lot. It says this. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil. I'm going to stop right there. If you don't have peace in every area of your life, but you've got evil in some areas, the Bible says, oh, if your, light be, if your eye be full of light, how great is that light? But if your eye have darkness in it, oh, how great is that darkness? If you've got darkness, areas of your life where there's evil and not peace, wickedness, sin, you need to understand that these aren't God's thoughts. That's not his plan and purpose for you. What is his plan and purpose? To deliver you out of that stronghold, to remove you from that captivity. But we got to do something. Well, I go out, I'm on the street preaching about Jesus. Hey, praise the Lord. Good. Good. Is anybody getting saved? And once they get saved, is there, are, they, are they still going to shoot dope? You think I'm kidding. I, I've been there. Godly sorrow works repentance. Godly sorrow. Godly sorrow. The Bible says that God visits the iniquities of our fathers onto the third and fourth generation. Hey, listen, I love my kids. I'm not trying to jack them up. I did some bad stuff when I was growing up, and I jacked up. I brought some things on to some of my kids. And uh, I've repented for that. But my God, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to do that unto them. I want to train them up in the way they should go so when they're older, they won't depart from the faith. Why am I standing here today? Probably because I had a praying family. And when I was little, I received some sort of training. But I was much like the prodigal son. I wanted what I wanted. I wanted it now, even though I wasn't entitled to it. And then I went and squandered it away. But when I came home with a broken and repentant heart, my father, Jesus, was there to wrap his arms around me because he loved me. He didn't even judge me. He just said, hey, listen, I love you. I got you. Let me help you out of that pit. Let's get your feet established, and then let's get that garbage and baggage out of your life. But it was at my pace. It was at my pace. I can still be holding on to it. But when I got a taste of God's goodness, oh, hallelujah. I tasted and I seen that the Lord was good. But every time the goodness of God came, we have to understand that the trials got bigger. Oh, hallelujah. I, I just got healed. Hey, look, dude, that's great. Oh, there's a trial coming your way. Because the enemy takes notice. The Bible says in Christianity... Wear the whole armor of God. Not just sometimes, but all the times. Endure hardness as a good soldier of Christ. Fight the good fight of faith. Nowhere does it ever, I, I, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. If I, Somebody tell me, please. Does it say, hey, when you get saved and you repent and you, you're a Christian, you're not going to go through anything and everything in your life is going to be like a, 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 a sweet roses, a garden. Tell me, please, does it say it? But that's the dream that we've been sold. And then we sit here like we did this morning and say, well, why do bad things happen to good people? I'm a Christian. 
hey, listen, I get it. You got legal rights somewhere in your life. Where do I got legal rights? You keep recycling through something. Well, there's an area that God is trying to get your attention and say, hey, listen, stop. Stop. We got to stop. He says this to give you an expected end. Then you shall then shall you call upon me and you shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you. He's saying, hey, then you'll call on me and I'll hear you. I'll listen to what you're saying. A man dishonors his wife. It says in Ephesians, his prayers are hindered. I'm telling you, that's a real statement. Happy wife, happy life. I'm serious. Look, man, I'm a married man. It's important for me to get my prayers answered. But I'm not, I'm not perfect by any means. But the Bible tells me to be, therefore, perfect as my Father is in heaven. That means I need to develop the mind of Christ. That means I need to be able... To hang on that cross and look over and say, hey, this day you'll be with me in paradise and forgive them, Father. They don't know what they're doing. In other words, I'm not Jesus. I'm not hanging on the cross. But hypothetically, I need to look at those who offend me and say, hey, it isn't them who's offended me. It's the spirits trying to get me to take an offense so they can infect me and destroy my life. My life has been stolen long enough. I made a conscious decision, and we have to make a conscious decision to take it back and be a doer of the Word, to walk in the total victory that's given to us through the authority of the Word of God in Christ Jesus. He needs to have the authoritative direction. That's a big word, authority and authoritative direction in your life, period. And you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. When we search for God with all our heart, our joy turns to sorrow. Well, what's that mean? Well, hey, I was joyful going to the club. I was joyful with my living. I was joyful in pornography. I was joyful on the streets. I was joyful being a slave to sin. Well, it doesn't sound like you were. At that moment, you couldn't have convinced me that I wasn't. I'm serious. Take anybody. Anybody living in sin or living in delusion, and they'll tell you that it's joyful, it's good, they're okay. They don't have a problem. Talk to any addict. I don't have a problem. It's not affecting my family. Talk to somebody in jail. I'm the one doing the time, not my family. Dude, you're in delusion. You have been deceived. But when you call on the Lord and you search for him with all your heart and he's found of you, your joy turns to mourning. Your mourning then at that point turns to joy. How does that, why, that don't make no sense. That's a, that's a, what are they, cuts? That's, that's contrary. Your joy in the morning, your morning to joy. Hey, listen, when you let go of the things of the world and you cry out to God because of godly sorrow and you repent and turn from your wicked ways and you get delivered from that bondage, your tears become tears of joy because the shackles and chains have been broken off you. You are now walking in that victory. You feel lighter. My God, who I thought I was, I wasn't. To ask anybody that comes to the deliverance class, they'll tell you when they leave. My God, I did. what have I been carrying? The first thing out of their mouth is I feel lighter. My head feels clearer. I feel like something has been picked off me. It has. Demonic oppression. Well, not everything's a demon, brother. Hey, listen, if it's wicked... And it's causing you to sin and you can't let it go. Unclean spirit, familiar spirit, seducing spirit. Jesus came to give you life and give it to you abundantly. Well, I'm praying for the healing. Here I am again. I'm saying it again. Well, then something's blocking it. It says here, thoughts of peace, not of evil. Evil is wickedness. The word wicked, actually, and evilness comes from the word pornea. If you trace it down the line, it's perversion. In other words, it's not right. It's polluted. It's defiled. You have something in your body defiling it. Something in your mind is defiling your thinking. What is it? Well, I'm born again. What is it? Dude, listen, this is 101. Jesus came to set the captives free. If you don't believe me, I'm going to read it to you, and I'm going to close. I'm going to read this. And I'm sorry, I had some other scriptures. 
Uh, this just seems a, I don't know, praise the Lord. Right here. I got to find the chapter here. Here we go. If you don't believe me. Jesus loves you, man. He's, he's our only hope. He is. He has to be our all in all. He has to be the apple in your eye, the chocolate in your chip. He's got to be it all, man. But he ain't like a no-bake cookie. It's going to take some time. There's going to be a refining process that you go through. Amen. Jesus loves you. He loves everybody in here. He's never had a bad thought about anybody. Never. Listen to this. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me, poured out. The word anointing means that he has poured out something upon you. To preach the gospel, the glorious good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal. That means to men, put back together. The what? Broken hearted. Broken hearted. To preach, to proclaim deliverance to the captives. Deliverance to the captives. Jesus spent one-third of his ministry talking about deliverance, casting out devils and healing the sick. You don't believe me? Look at it. Look it up. Yeah. Go back and look it up. Google it. That's, I mean, Google I'd get it. Google it. He spent most of his ministry healing and casting out devils. Why don't we hear about these things? Amen. Well, because the churches are ran exactly how the enemy wants them to be ran. No power. No power. No power. Nothing. But we have the very one who dwells within us that was raised from the dead victoriously on the third day over sin, death, hell, and the grave. We, if we can just get a grasp on the power of the blood of Christ, Amen. nobody would be sick. Amen. Nobody would be infected. Amen. Nobody. 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 Amen. But we can't fix people. They have to want it. Right. Listen to this. In the recovering of sight to the blind, those who are deceived, their joy, their mourning, their joy, their joy in their sin. They're blind. I was blind, but now I see. Yeah. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. What is that sound? Well, it's because you're set at liberty. Bruised, afflicted, crushed. Jesus said this. This is what Jesus came. This, is, this was the prophecy, I believe, in Isaiah. And then Jesus quoted this. This is Jesus' word. And remember, John the Baptist, who was born to pave the way for Jesus, said, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Amen. Jesus, this was his whole purpose. Right? I'm going to read it again. He was anointed for this purpose. To preach the glorious good news to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted. Jesus said this. That's the most important words in history. Right here. This is the gospel. John 3, 16, for God, that's the gospel. For we're not ashamed of it. That is the power of God unto salvation. For faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But this is the children's bread. This is your meal. This right here. Heal. Get your broken heart healed. Get delivered from those who have been held captive. And receive your sight. Amen. Receive your sight. Stop being blind. Stop being in delusion. Taste and see that the Lord is good. What's holding you back? What's stopping you? Well, I can tell you what it is. Fear. Cowardness. Oh, I'm not afraid of nothing. Well, sure you are. You have a step down in faith. Oh, I just, I'm not ready for it. What's that? Th where do you think that thought's coming from? Let's just, let's just lean forward here. Yeah, that's what I do when I'm thinking about something. I'll lean forward across the desk and look all serious. But where is that coming from? This is what Jesus said he came to do. It's not coming from the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost says, Hey, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word in the Greek saved means delivered. Delivered. 
set free, healed. Jesus is our only hope. If you want a better life, you better get right with the Lord. Well, I am right with the Lord. Okay, listen, hey, we won't be perfect until that day of redemption. So we all have areas in our life that we can work on. Maybe we're just learning. Maybe we're testing the waters out on some things. Maybe we need some healing. Maybe we need some deliverance. Whatever it is, Jesus has got it for you. He's got it for you. He is the worm on the hook. And he's just reeling you in. It's at your pace. He wants you to take a bite of it. Why? Because he wants you to get caught. Because it says that, hey, he don't ever want to let you go. He don't want to lose you. He don't. He loves you. I'm going to pray out. Let's just stand and pray. As I pray, I've been reading the Psalms a lot. And there's a couple I just like to read. Just listen to this stuff. But I was seeing of thy power. And I will sing aloud of thy mercy in the morning. For thou hast been my defense and refuge in the day of my trouble. Unto thee, O my strength, will I sing for God and my defense and the God of mercy. Hear my cry and attend to my prayer. God shall see my desire upon my enemies. Cast your burden upon the Lord and he will sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Why are we being moved? Why are we carrying our own issues? In God will I praise his word. In the Lord will I praise his word. In God have I put my trust. I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. A man, man ain't the one that gives you life. Jesus is. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Dear Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for watching over us. Lord Jesus, we just praise your holy name. And Lord, it uh, seems like every time, I, 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 sometimes I just want, man, hey, I would love to just stand up here and share a message like Joel Osteen or something. Everybody's just smiling and this and that. But Lord, the, the gospel is hard. Yes. It is hard, Lord. It's hard making changes. It's hard investigating. It's hard understanding that we've been lied to. But, Lord, we can do all things through you who strengthens us, and you'll supply our every need. Yes, and, Lord, I pray for every believer here, every believer online. I ask that you touch their hearts and minds. I ask that you heal their land, Lord. And, Lord Jesus, I just ask that you bring them to a place of repentance. If there be anyone struggling with fear or cowardice, are just feeling like it's, they're just unsure. Lord, I ask that you prick their heart. I ask that you move them from the place of contentment, that their heart may be fixed upon you, and that they may taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. I ask that you bless them as they go forth. And Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, every one of us, we just forgive everyone who's ever harmed us. That's the first step. We read it this morning. Forgive us, Lord, as we forgive others. Lord, we forgive everyone who's hurt us, our mothers, our fathers. We forgive ourselves, Lord. We release all the negative emotions, all the hurt. And Lord, we, we repent, Lord, for having doubt in your word, for trying to place logic behind it. And Lord, I ask and we ask that your spirit move upon these men and women. That you manifest your love within their heart, Lord. And that you help them to be the overcomers that they've been called to be. Yes, Bless us this week as we go forth. In Jesus' mighty name, let us all together say, Amen, amen, amen. amen, amen. Be seated, I believe uh, Miss Susan's got some stuff for us.